Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, family, and thank you for coming to Deb Chanel's 48th World. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, Kenya Moore, the Kenya Summer Moore, was on Today.com. Um, I don't know when the story aired. Let me see if I can find any information. Well, it was published June 17th, which was yesterday on Friday. They got with Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore got with them. Um, and they had a little interview. They were talking about the comings and goings of the show. And who was doing what, where, and when. Okay, and we know Kenya had to definitely bring out Marlo. But I was like, Kenya, okay, we, we don't have Nene, okay? It ain't too many shit stores uh, uh, on the platform, okay? And we definitely ain't talking about the newbies that, that are here with uh, Sanya, or Sonya Ross and Drew Sador, okay? Because Sanya Ross just thinks everything is just, you know, we get, we have to give it to her because she has... Uh, four gold medals, you know what I'm saying? She's sticking to that and she's riding that real hard. But I'm like, girl, sit your ass down somewhere, please, for the moment, anyway, just just for the moment, okay? But, um, you know, we don't have somebody like uh, Wendy Williams and uh, Nene, Nene Leakes on the show anymore, so we have to work with what we are given with. So, if everybody was in perfect harmony. Do you think the show will still last? I would say no. Because you didn't foster that as your main selling point when Real Housewives of Atlanta was introduced. So with looking and, and being in that realm of thinking, everybody don't want the fairy tale, um, what do you call it? Black women doing the darn thing and... You know, a lot of shows just have not been showed to foster and grow and manifest, you know, to the mainstream public. Mainstream public wasn't given that as the first start of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's not their recipe they're cooking up with. But, you know, people still want to run and try to be on the show. So we already know this show was messed up from the beginning. It showed uh, black females in a... Uh, subservient type of role meaning it was going to be um, ratchet so you can't have ratchetness and goodness at the same time you either gonna want one or the other you're gonna want more of the other or more the um or more of the good stuff and we all know what drives television out here now it has to be sensational it has to be scandalous and it got to be um ratchet in a sense that's what sales just like sex sales and we've shown that through our movies uh sitcoms comedy all of that advertisement everybody wants sex in a sense that's why they get the lingo uh or the slogan sex sales okay and it doesn't matter if they're what teenage years up to oh look at madonna she's still trying to shake it like it's fast okay Ooh. and ain't too many people you know getting with that type of optics so I don't know what Kenya is wanting. Marlo is doing her job. Because if it wouldn't be Marlo, who then? Who? Because Kenya, you sat out. You said you're not going you're not gonna play the villain this season, okay? So and I'm still wondering, hey, how are you and uh Cynthia doing? We're not getting any updates really. You know, I've heard somewhere when I was looking at something, 
you um, put out there that y'all are in a much better space than you were. But evidently, that may be half truth because I'll never see y'all together. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't think it's bad for you to hang around Cynthia when you're taping. And what happened to Brandon? Was this just the first couple of seasons you were on to show that you had some gay friends? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even know if Brandon was being gay at the time. I think he was trying to play a straight man. But it just is what it is. If you caught the show um, earlier on in the seasons, you would have known Kenya and Brandon were like stuck on glue. They were a freaking frat of Real Housewives of Atlanta before Portia and Phaedra became that. But we got to have a character like Marlo. You got to have characters like Nene. You got to have characters such as yourself, Kenya Moore, to bring some class to the show. To, to, to show the viewership that we still have women that are willing to be on a retro TV show, but not necessarily act that way. You got Candy in that same uh uh, frame of mind she don't want to be too ratchet when she's taping because i know she's watching out for her brand and stuff of that nature we know that get it got it good but she going to talk ratchet and out the side of her neck when she's doing interviews with uh several um popular uh entertainment sites that goes for the gossip the news and they want to spread it out you know on their platform such as access hollywood or access.com um uh who else is out there essence.com bt.com any affiliates such as that they want to always raise above the level that they're giving us on this show which is Real Housewives of Atlanta. So, like, you're representing real well. Candace representing real well. Like I said, until she goes off topic and does interviews outside of the show. And then she's act like she's coming with the fire or the flavor. And she's going to set people straight. Because she has her ideal set on, Ooh, we'll wait till the reunion. Y'all going to see it pop off. Nah, baby, we, we want to see it pop off now. And you continue to pop off when you get to the reunion. You know what I'm saying? We want you to show and prove when shit is happening right then and there. And not, you know, giving it a lifeline to last for the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion show. Hey, we don't want to wait till that time. We want you to show and prove and increase those ratings. Because people... Want to see ratchetness more than good wholesome type shows. That just seems like how it is these days. Okay. Uh, but um, we're going to go into a story. That uh, Today.com had brought out. They interviewed Kenya Moore. Um, and it just got published for the mainstream public to take um, a look at. It was done on June 17th by Mitch Riss Miller or something to that degree. But they titled this story as Kenya Moore says Marlo Hampton behavior on the show declasses the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Go figure. Go figure girl. She thinks she's making good TV. It's just making her look like the devil she is. The longtime Real Housewives of Atlanta star told today of the show's new edition. Okay. For Kenya Moore being booked and busy. Baby is second nature. Moore who first came to prominence. At Miss, as Miss USA in 1993. Is an actor. Uh, entrepreneur and mother. I think that is so sexist. Why do you always have to put actor. When it comes to females. It should be actress. You know what I'm saying. Same, giving the same type of prestige as actor. But that's just my sidebar. I just, it bothers me when it does that. Because we need to, actress would be for women. Actor means to be for men. But it seems like they take the actor to encompass both sexes. And that is sexist at, at its best, isn't it? Okay, but anyway. Um, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, since 2013, Kenya has been on the show making her mark with quotable sayings like, Gone with the Wind, Fabulous. Yes, and the Kenya Moore hair care. Oh, righty then. We, we know all about that. We know all about that. But anyway, <coughs> season 14 of Real Housewives of Atlanta, which premiered in May, stars Candy Burris, Marlo Hampton, Moore, Drew Sador, Sanya, or Sonya Richards-Ross, and Sheree Whitfield, and airs every Sunday at 8 p.m. 
on Bravo with episodes available the next day on Peacock. The departure of longtime cast members Portia Williams and Cynthia Bailey left room for more drama and these ladies are over serving. I wonder why they didn't mention Nene. Maybe because of the lawsuit? I don't know. And they don't want to be attached to that? Maybe so. But going on, it says today, sat down with more to hear about what's transpired uh, so far this season and that she has gone that she is going on and what's to come okay more loves new real housewives cast member sonya richards ross all right season 14 uh welcome newcomer richards ross a four-time olympic gold medalist and friend of sador and you see how they keep putting them two together but sonya just really comes out and says no we're not friends <laughs> I'm like, girl, sit your ass down somewhere, okay? A friend would have picked you up like Drew Sador did. Now, is she a good, good friend? Or she's just a a, 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 a a casual friend? Or just that and a third? But you could have called anybody. But you wanted to get that taping in and that more money coming your way. So, you had to call on old Drew. And old Drew came saw and conquered got you safely back at home got your kids picked up and to me that should have been a good point of reference for Sonya to suggest that Drew can be a good friend okay but you got to watch her you got to watch her because she got a loose mouth but Sonya did not want to put that on uh Drew Sador she didn't want to give her those accolades but it just is what it is because I'm pretty sure more than latter we're going to find some true tea on Miss Sonya Richards Ross that she ain't all that in dinner bag of chips okay that was my uh what do you call it that was my spin off or my you know distracting from the real story that's at hand okay my side view my side point okay wasn't in this article but anyway uh, Moore says she loves Richard Ross and that she fits in really well. Moore said finds Richard Ross similar to former co-star Cynthia Bailey. And she's a peacemaker and not very problematic. Now, as we can see from the last episode, uh, Kenya, you pretty much lied on this situation because it seems like Sonya wants the smoke from Drew. Okay, pick it on the weakest vessel, the weakest link on the train, Okay. And she wants to stay with you, Kenya and Candy, because y'all have a little bit more clout in the community, in showbiz, and just all around wealth, okay? Because they be getting to the money. And you say everything about Candy, and Lord knows I have said some things, and they are absolutely true. But girlfriend know how to get to that bag, okay? And she's over there talking about Kenya knows how to get to that bag, because Kenya ain't going to do nothing without a check. I said, that's how y'all all should be. Y'all are on this pl platform, wonderful platform, to uplift you all's uh, entrepreneurships and put y'all in different revenue streams. I'm making new income coming from this show. Because as we've seen, they're getting rid of the OGs come uh, what may. All right. So, Ken, you need to be making more business moves. Continue to improve that. Because you're the last one of the simple OGs that's making that good paycheck. And they were cleaning the house two years ago. And, you know, while these different suits coming aboard uh, for the franchise in its essence, guess what? Y'all might not have a job sooner or later. So I guess it would behoove all of you all to show up and show out and put them ratings out there. Even if you had to serve it with a, uh, a side dish of ratchetness, okay? If you if you don't want to do that, then you can always definitely come back to being a professional uh, actor in a sitcom show or in a soap opera show or something where, you know, it's a guaranteed check in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but going back to the article, we kind of waved off a little bit. Um, it says, when speaking to today, Sadora called Richard Ross a flip-flopper. Okay. More agreed, saying Richard Ross kind of feel those shoes. I can see where people would say that because I just don't think she likes to make waves. She wants to be friends with everyone. So sometimes she may take a stance and that may change depending on how someone reacts, she said. She thinks of Drew Sador marriage is toxic and not beneficial. 
a stance more been vocal about her thoughts on Sidora husband Ralph Pittman uh, relationship. Uh, more is clear why fans and castmates, herself included, react so vicariously to the relationship. It looks like a very toxic relationship that is not beneficial to Drew. She said, you know, Kenya like to wear many hats. So it seems like she's a marriage counselor now. All right. <laughs> I'm like, but you didn't do so well with Mark. Don't play this. Don't play that scene up too too well. Okay. Because you just bring us back to how Mark made you look less than human child. And everybody wanted to come through the screen or see him in public and really give uh, some two cents on how he was treating you, Kenya. So, uh, yeah, the apple don't fall too far from the tree on that one. So we need you to kind of stop. Taking up for Drew, let Drew do her own thing before the shit falls back on your face and Drew start blaming you for her issues. But we know you're fabulous, you're going with the wind fabulous, you're gonna tear into Drew. Might hurt her feelings here and there. So don't go there. We have a little bit more hope for Drew to simmer down and show us what she really working with than her storyline just being a you know a fad of here we go again with the marriage uh scenes and how we need to just uh be sympathetic and stuff because she's going through a hard time in her marriage that shit don't play it up play it out we don't care you either stay in the shit or you get out it's one or the other one or the other we ain't straddling the fence just stay and work on it and and don't have no ill feelings if it still turn out for the worst or well, keep it moving okay that's what we need more of keep it moving status quo and, and get your bag okay that's what women have to think about themselves now because you know men here days they acting like women they want you to take care of them they want uh once you get divorced from it they want spousal support now who does that who does the flip side? It's supposed to be the women get child support. Women get spousal support. Especially if they did the due diligence. And they were all in then some in their marriage. But it just seems like the opposite is turning. And I'm like, I don't like that turn of events. But anyway, moving back to the story. It says, uh, more seeing similarities, similarities between Sador's marriage and her own to Mark Daly. More filed for divorce in 221. But the divorce still isn't finalized for people. And I'm like, that's right, can you? When are you going to get that shit finalized? We tired of that storyline. We tired of hearing about more. We don't want to go back and forth with that scenario. Okay, the storyline. Please get that taken care of, girl. And just pay him for the pool that you built. And he used his money or his funds because he don't deserve your house and anything else. Just pay him back for the pool situation, okay? We wish you could just tear up the pool and deliver it to him. And he figure out how he's going to incorporate that into an apartment or condo situation that he's in, okay? But it just is what it is. In New York, everybody loves the um, apartment scene or whatever in Central Park. But when you come into the South, we talking about owning land and putting your own house on top of that land, okay? But anyway, um, going back to the story, it says, I see so many celebrity uh, similarities between my husband and Ralph. It's really scary for me to watch it before my eyes because I feel like I'm Drew in that moment a lot of times. Well, Drew kind of stuck up for herself, Kenya. When you and Mark was in the situation that y'all were in, cohabitating or whatever the case may have been, you never stood up to Mark, okay? You, you just let him set the tone and everybody else wanted to go off on him itself for you. It's like you were scared to have a voice, but Drew is having a voice over there. It might not be getting heard here in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> she might be talking to the streets because Ralph sure don't be paying her no mind and he has no intentions of changing. So good luck with that, Kenya. But no, uh, Sedora be taking up for her own self, even though she'd be like, Am I, you know, she'd be second guessing herself and stuff of that nature because he makes her or uh, puts her in that frame of mind of doing so. He was a manipulator. Okay, but no, 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 no. She was very voiceful. Uh, and getting into Ralph's ass or trying to tell him how she felt even though she came away with tears and he came away with a lot of verbiage that we could care less to hear about or see on camera but uh 
Kenya stood up for you in a sense where she wasn't losing any fame. It didn't care. She didn't care one way or the other. But she was taken up for the principal part of how Rock was treating you. And she got in his ass. But she had to come back and say she apologized because she kind of overstepped her boundaries in getting in this situation. But Kenya, that's what we pay you for. <laughs> we, we pay you for what you do, how you do it. And the result is priceless. Okay. But anyway, going back to the article. It says, um, more sticks up for Sidoria to Pittman in season 14. More said she imagined in that moment how Pittman speaks to Sidor without cameras being there. Okay, we, we know what he, he, he does, uh, can you? He talks to her like shit. Okay, nothing new on that front. Nothing new on that front. But we're glad you caught yourself trying to make it a pivotal point of the argument that you were trying to, uh, save or start with the whole thing of she took you the situation with mark the situation with sedora and ralph brought you back to the situation you and mark had okay but totally different outcomes drew don't plan on leaving him um just like you weren't really planning on leaving mark if he had wanted to give you a second chance which we didn't want him to but we see how things are unfolding, still unfolding with your non-existence of a divorce because he's holding on one more money, which that tells us what kind of person he's always been, has been, and will continue to be. All right. But anyway, Sidora told Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live that she was grateful for more. I felt like I'm not crazy. Another woman shares my sentiments. We haven't even talked. On a re recent episode, <coughs> excuse me, more, I also weighed in on Sidora's new weight loss program. Sidora dropped it with Drew. She said it was giving Ponzi scheme as the website signed up. Portal didn't work. A problem that needs, that now, that's now fixed, according to Sidora. Moore said I was just being shady. I was not being serious. It's not meant to destroy someone or to completely tear them down. It's meant to be funny shade. Okay, which we called it. We got it. You served it up well. But really, did she need to go there? Not necessarily. But you were just bringing the drama uh, to intensify that scene. Okay. Uh, then we got more addresses. Whitfield and Hampton's comments about her. All right, on the last episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, scene showed Whitfield and Hampton talking about Burrs, Richard Sprouse, and more. Hampton says more went through every rapper in America and didn't get a ring. Yes, we heard that shade. It was very shadeful. Okay, it's a gutter behavior which is declasses the show. A lot of the antics she uses, she thinks she's making good TV. It's just making her look like the devil she is, she said. And I'm like, Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. Let's, mess, let's not mess with the optics because before any of this play blow by blow uh, declasses the show uh, type of uh, form you're saying Marlo is, is trying to uh, possess on the show, it actually threw you all's ratings to the stratosphere, okay? Because so I think the first four episodes was just like, what? What have y'all served us up? We don't want it. We are not on a diet. We want to eat the meat and potatoes, okay? And we'll have salad on the side. But right now, we need you to up the game before we turn off the TV and go look at something else. Or turn the channel, I should say. So, drama, as well as sexism, uh, brings in ratings. That's just the way the world is. They don't want to see anything uh, remotely that compares them to their life. They want to exit out. And they want some drama. They want some. Uh, a little side of fakeness. And they just want to get away from the real world. And all that exists in it. So if you're going to give us drama. As long as it's not hurting anybody physically. We can put up with it. <laughs> it's basically. What the stats are showing Kenya. People want ratchetness. They don't want good wholesome good feel type movies until the holidays you know what i'm saying like the giving is a gift that keeps on giving laughter uh being with family uh you know think it being somebody's keeper all that kind of stuff we only look look forward to doing that around the holidays that seems why it, that's what it seems like on me just looking at life 
only when you got like uh fourth of july you're celebrating you know the wars we had to go through to have this country free but in reality blacks are not free people of color are not free we still have discrimination we have sexism we have racism we have discrimination and none of those is none of that is going anywhere soon okay so uh yeah can you we, we, we don't want you to uh, mess up and be thrown off the show uh, because there is no show to be thought of because nobody is acting accordingly, okay? If everybody acted real good and all that kind of stuff, when nobody watched the show came, we would have left in season four. I mean, not, well, yeah, season four, or <clears throat> we would have uh, left uh, in the episode four of the season 14, okay? But anyway... Going back to the article, it says it's gutter behavior which declasses the show. Moore suggested that Hampton's actions may stem from her wanting to keep the role in the cast. Season 14 is Hampton's first season as a full-time peach, but she has appeared on the show since season 4. Okay, Moore explained. She's waited 100 years for a full-time role, and now she feels like I have to do all these things to keep the position. It's just an exclusive club that had never let her in before. And now there, and now, excuse me, and now that we let her in, it's like, did we do the right thing? Is the neighborhood ruined? Is it kind of feels like it's heading that way? And I'm like, wait a minute, you're trying to say candy birds and you single-handedly write the past and gives the right of ways of who's entered into real housewives of Atlanta family and who's not girl can you know what you're trying to tell us girl on the sly you're trying to give us access <laughs> to the real truth girl do they really do the bravo execs really um value your opinions when you're saying who to bring back and who not to bring back and my understanding kid you want to bring nene back okay so i'm like girl Woo, what a change we have made. But you know, Nene's good TV. She's going to bring the cat cattiness. She's going to bring everything. But we don't really want Nene back because she just, she don't make y'all lose y'all jobs. Because if she wins this lawsuit, somebody may be getting a pay cut. I'm just saying. I am just saying. But going back to the article, it says more feels that resolution with Hampton is not possible. Saying that the situation feels too far gone. She does have a message for Hampton. Deal with your own reputation. Stop trying to put things on Candy or myself. While Hampton spoke with the birds and more, Whitfield seemingly so co-signed Hampton's statements. She said yay and nodded her head as Hampton spoke. Moore said when Hampton and Whitfield get together, they're just real true mean girls okay after watching the scene Moore said she called Whitfield to express her discontent Whitfield told her that she didn't remember supporting Hampton's remarks Moore said she told Whitfield this is not who you are don't be that mean girl don't be her for more scenes <coughs> seeing Whitfield supports uh let me see Hampton's remarks about her with was hurtful and she said she supported Whitfield on and off camera especially with Whitfield's business ventures more explained I didn't want her to look foolish on TV now can you try to be somebody mama girl you trying to be somebody mama oh girl no 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 that's not your role we ain't we, we ain't here for that can you we here for you to do what you need to do to keep the show looking a little spicy and let the other women do what they need to do to contribute to the show can you okay that's all we need more has had many laugh in many laugh out loud moments over the years if she had to relive any for fun she would relive her gone with the wind fabulous moment from season five and you know season five is when Portia and Kenya both both came on the show I do believe okay uh <clears throat> while sparring with former co-stars Portia Williams Moore said they've been in the business for 20 years and I'm still here I'm still here I'm still fabulous rights fabulous gone with the wind fabulous but more this was more than a comeback to Williams who had used Moore's age as an insult Moore felt she was educating Williams on how she opened the doors for her and black women you're part of history. Do not understand. Do you not understand that? I opened doors for you the same way Hattie Mae Daniel opened the door for other black women back in the times. <laughs> I'm like, oh Lord, can you start shit again? Um, she says that's really where it came from. I'm just 
I just started thinking, you're such a fool, Mark said. Portia Williams left the show in 2021 after eight seasons as a wife and one as a friend. Moore said she hasn't seen or talked to Williams, but I don't have any ill feelings for her, she added. She's open to Williams returning to the show. I think I want what the fans want. If they want her, Williams, back, then I am supportive of that. She said, Moore's three-year-old daughter, Brooklyn Daly, has grown up in front of the cameras. Moore said, filming with Brooklyn is special. Uh, she is so articulate and funny and personable and kind. Okay. <coughs> She's kind like it's all for the best. That's, uh, and it's the best thing that mother could ask for. And to share that with the world, it just makes me proud, Moore said. Okay. Okay, but then um, they start asking Kenya some questions regarding the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And one of them is um, the Real Housewives cast member who causes the most drama. She says, Hampton, the Real Housewives cast member uh, gives the most uh, juicy storyline. She said, Whitfield, uh, if she wrote the shady note about Candy Burr's second dick in the locker room as Hampton suggested on Watch What Happens Live. That's 100% false. Why? I love Candy to death. That was also derogatory things written about me in those notes. I just didn't read them. Uh, another question was asked. The Real Housewives cast member who have who to have a juicy storyline. She said Drew Sedora. The Real Housewives of Atlanta cast member who has the best confessional. She said herself. The Real House cast member who surprised her the most was Whitfield. Um, the cast member who has the best look, she said herself. Okay, she's being over dramatic with that, but <laughs> I'm like, okay, can you toot your own horn? All right. Uh, the cast member who challenged her the most, she said, Sonya Richards Ross Moore said, You'll see, I get some stuff. Uh, I get some stuff coming up. It's like, wait. What you're coming for me? Are you sure you want to do that? Um, then we got cast members who throws the best events, she says herself. Um, the cast member she has the most fun with, she says Burris and Whitfield. Uh, who, who else she friends within the Bravo uh, family? She says uh, Teresa Gudas, Melissa Garga, uh, Gorga, and Erica Guardia. C Garaldi, uh, K uh, Kylie Richards, and Lisa Hosting. Then she was asked who, uh, who she most want to bring on the show. She said Laverne Cox. And if anybody don't know who Laverne Cox is, uh, she played in the Orange is the New Black, the woman that was doing the hair for the inmates. Um, and see, she played in what was that story called? The Devane. The, Anna Devane's story. That's on Netflix, I believe. She played a very good part in that as well. A supporting part, I should say. Uh, or just Google Laverne Cox and you'll see what comes up. And the reason why Moore explained she would love to have her on the show. She said she thinks she would be a freaking awesome housewife. She's intelligent. She can read. She's gorgeous. She's sophisticated. She's everything that I would want a housewife to be. Uh, on what next to come for the rest of season 14 uh the second half of the season is probably better than the first half i know it i know it i do know it okay that's on my sideboard <coughs> she said <coughs> probably better than the first half the trip's coming up the fight's coming up pretty e epic it's going to be happening so what do y'all think about that <coughs> and kenya's dialogue on how she feels about how the show is progressing, where she sees it going, and who's her favorite picks of the show. Okay, y'all know how I felt about it. Uh, now it's time for y'all to weigh in in those comments. Let me know. Okay, and I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.